most people, Judaism probably doesn't spring to mind when they hear the word cult. That's understandable, there are plenty of reformed, cultural, and secular Jews out there. However, my trip to Israel reminded me how complex Judaism actually is, and my visit to Israel's most closed-off, ultra-Orthodox Jewish neighborhood, B'nai Brak, taught me how restrictive and sectarian it can be. Those familiar with my videos know that I utilize the work of psychologist Stephen Hassan to define and discuss cults. Hassan developed a tool called the Bite Model, which describes several tactics which cult-like groups use to control their members. It's somewhat of a diagnostic tool. The more features from the Bite Model that a group displays, the more cult-like they are. Throughout our trip through B'nai Barak, we'll keep track of which features of these Jewish sects fit the features of the Bite Model. Finally, allow me to introduce our crew. My co-host, Armin Navabi, an ex-Muslim atheist activist and founder of the world's largest atheist group, Atheist Republic. Jeremy, the producer, editor, and cameraman for our trip, and the creator of Aurora Creative Media. Amir S., one of the trip's sponsors and the head of the Israeli Atheist Association. Amir, our brilliant tour guide who grew up in B'nai Brak, but is now an atheist and progressive activist. And of course, you know me, Drew. In meeting Amir at the start of the day, I learned that he not only grew up and still had family in B'nai Brak, but was also a fan of my YouTube channel. It's so crazy to me that there's anyone that likes my channel in, in Israel. Your generation of atheist YouTubers are such like a, a fresh air of atheism because when I just discovered like atheist YouTube and that eventually is what helped me leave my community. Mm -hmm. I met like a lot of people like the amazing atheists. Yeah. And I, I found it a little bit difficult <laughs> to, uh, I agreed with a lot of his points on religion. I just didn't agree with the rest of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I understand. when I met like you and I also follow uh, rationality rules and- uh, Cosmic skeptic. Yeah, yeah, and also Jimmy Snow. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, I love Jimmy. Oh my gosh, there are people there who are sympathetic of what I went through as a female, mm -hmm. and like I can actually relate to their content. Yeah, so. that's awesome. I'm glad that you're their fan too because they make content that is amazing. I just the other day I was visiting my family and like I was breaking down the bite model. Really? <laughs> I'm like no things way. that I see it. That's yeah. so cool. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Once we cross that line, no we hugging. Should, yeah, no hugging. Yeah, get it out <laughs> can of we way. actually, can we mention that we're an atheist? We're atheists? Oh, okay. So in some places, like, there are people who know me and I I still visit and I, so I don't want, like, too much trouble. Okay, so what does that mean? What should we not do? Uh, like, I also think people would be less uh, willing to accommodate. I would be very interested in capturing it to see their reaction to us telling them we're atheists. Is that possible? Like, I'm, I'm a bit scared of the result. But that makes me even more interested now to see what... If you're scared, that means that the reaction is something I would be very interested like in seeing. The, but not un unless it has consequences to you. Yeah, yeah. like, then uh, I do it not, would be, have Yeah, okay, we have then to consider that no, this is, is temporary like, consequences for us, permanent consequences Okay. For so. I don't want my siblings to get kicked out of school. Okay. And that's something that could happen. Your siblings could get kicked out of school if people realize that you that I'm are an promoting atheist. atheism in wow. Bayrock, yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that's okay. a, a way of keeping people in the religion. Basically once they leave like you I'm not the one who, who's going to be hurt by the community. People who stay and are in contact with me, they're going to be affected. So what about when this video gets out then is that not going to affect them? That's not as, as much of a problem as you personally going to people in their city and telling them like, oh, we're atheists. They're going to feel like you're trying to like invade. You have to understand, this is one of the first all Orthodox cities in Israel. And they fought so much to, to make that happen that they're going like, to keep their ground. You first have to find either people who speak English or even people who would be willing to talk to us since we're dressed in secular clothes. Don't put too much hope on that. Again, the reason why I'm asking you this is because I want to make sure that we don't do anything that has a, a negative consequences to you. If we try to talk to them and get on camera showing that they don't want to talk to us because we're wearing secular clothes, so we can capture the fact that these people won't talk to us because we're wearing yeah. secular secular clothes. Okay. Yeah, okay. bite model. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. You say don't bring up the A word. Yeah. Do not mention atheist. Yeah. But you say it's okay to use the word secular. Yeah. And I ask them what they think about us secularists. Secular. Yeah. 
Okay. They won't care about you guys being like secular because Judaism doesn't care about converting people. If they don't care about secular, why do they care about atheists? People who live in that mindset can't really grasp the idea that you actually don't believe in a god. Can you at least tell us what you think would have happened if we went there and told them, hey, we're atheists? No one would actually like say anything mean to you. People might just walk away or later on like they might my parents would have consequences. So they would tell my what parents like why do you still talk to your uh, child that mm. I by the way, I, I should have mentioned it earlier, but I don't identify as a woman. So. Is it what? I don't identify as a woman, so Okay. <laughs> no no her uh, pronouns. Okay. What would their reaction be to that? They know or they just ignore it. It was easier for me to tell my parents I don't identify as female than telling them I, I, I don't believe in God. Did you get that? <laughs> Did you get that? that? The greatest taboo here is not saying that you identify with a different gender than about your parents. They're more tolerant of that than you not believing in God. They can understand that I don't identify as, a, as female and I don't necessarily only date uh, men but they don't understand the fact that I don't believe. If this doesn't convince you that atheists are one of the most oppressed groups in the world, I don't know what else does. Secular, okay. Trans, okay. Gay, okay. Everything, okay. Atheist is still not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. But it's not as bad. Clarification. None of that is okay, <laughs> but still not as bad as atheists. The worst atheist is the lowest scum of the earth that you could possibly be. That's the worst possible thing. And that's why in places where you can use the word atheist, say I'm secular, humanist, free thinker, you have to use the word atheist so that it becomes normal. Right? Do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. That's a hot take. I think we should start uh, heading. This is like the main entrance of, of the city. The rest of the city was branched out of it. So you have to tell us how did you manage to get out of that? No problem. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube. YouTube helped. <laughs> <laughs>
and there are like dedicated stores for that. So oh. we'll see that. But it's weird for me that a religious store wouldn't have the telephone. Yeah, because it's like a lot of stuff for the house. It's like for books, prayer right. books, like this is a mezuzah, so it's what you put on the on the wall of your door when you enter the house. Oh, really? Uh, it has like a scroll inside with the biblical the concept verses. came from the story of uh, the Exodus. But shouldn't it be blo uh, lamb's blood on top of your dirt? No. no, that's only in Passover, but we don't practice that anymore. <laughs> so it's a lot of really? like house-related stuff. There are yarmulkes. Can I try? Yeah. Come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which what color do you want? I'll, uh, I'll take the blue because... Purple one's here. <laughs> okay, wait. I'm going to do a different color. Maybe more people will talk to us if we go out like this. <laughs> really? You, you think so? Should we get these so that we could talk to more people? I don't know. You won't pass, but <laughs> yeah, you, you can try. You, what you don't understand that's going on here is that you've got different kind of keepers. Each, Each one, one is of belongs a to a different sector. group, to, to a different sector. Wow. Oh my god. Each one of these the represents a different group? Yeah, Each so wow. for instance, <laughs> that's a lot of uh, this one <laughs> is, uh, is of a certain group that originates in Poland. In Poland and they're called Gore Hasidim. This is of like the more modern ones because it doesn't have any uh, lacing at the end and it's uh, velvet. And this one of like, this is the one for like the very religious people, but that originate in Lithuania. This one, like no one would wear it because it's colorful. And even though it's blue, it's like, it's considered like very, Too very colorful. bold. Like if you wear it. So am I wearing something bold right now by wearing <laughs> this? Like a colorful you one. Know, yeah. Wow. Nothing says your religion is anti-fun more than <laughs> saying that color blue or red is too much. Uh, you probably noticed by now that old men are wearing black and white only. Right. Huh. We call them penguins if because... <laughs> penguins. Yeah. Here's something I don't understand. How is a god that comes from ancient, you know, how is an ancient religion? How do you convince yourself that something that comes out of Poland in recent history is what <laughs> your god, your ancient gods, what you... They what don't you, think it's what God said. They think it's tradition and they value tradition in all costs. Can you switch? Like how do you like... If, you if you switch from this to that, right. it means you left your sector. And is that a bad thing? Yeah. Okay. They're okay. considered like one of the most strict sectors. Okay, but if people see that as a bad thing, that means a god that was an ancient, that had an ancient religion wants you to wear the Polish one rather than what no, is this? No, because you don't respect your ancestors. Your ancestors um, wore this and now you're switching to that. All of this shows us that... Uh, it's Steve, the bite model. Yeah, the bite model. So like Stephen Hassan's uh, criteria for determining uh, a cult, essentially, this, is, this hits one of the markers yeah. really heavily because restricting clothing and hairstyle and things Even like that. Even if you switch, like you have, they w also wear a hat, like the old president hat. Yeah. And if you switch the bow, because there is always a bow on the side, if you switch it to the other side, it might mean that you left your sector and you're in a different one. Wow. Like even <laughs> that type of small detail can like make you be sh be shunned by your group. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So it, it hits on that part of the bite model to an extreme degree. Yeah. So I, I, I remember watching, I think it was Telltale. You know who I'm talking about? Telltale? Yeah, Telltale, yeah, he's so one of my best friends. He <laughs> always does like, is it a cold thing? And he was doing it about Judaism. And I got really frustrated with him. Really? Because Why? he said that Judaism isn't a cult because he knows some atheist people are Jewish. Uh -huh. He didn't differentiate between the religion, which is this, and, the, and the ethnic group, the culture, which is me. Like, I'm atheist, but I'm still Jewish. It's not my religion, it's my ethnic yeah. uh, group. And yes, there are ver ver versions of Judaism, like what you see here, that are they fit the bite model so yeah. you can't say like oh judaism isn't a cult very strongly too so anybody who's listening to telltale out there we're telltale calling himself, you out calling you out right now <laughs> i have a question this is actually very important to me reaching to children yeah so i didn't read any secular i wasn't exposed to pop culture at all so talking about <laughs> famous singers uh, famous actors, television, internet, any of that. I was only exposed to books that were authored by religious people and they usually contained like stories about religious figures, mostly men, as you can tell. That's information no control. Here. That's information control in the oh, Bible yeah. to a crazy degree. Can you show us like which one would you want to show us? Like Just I want to show you this one. Okay. The name of the book is The Escape from Iran. Escape from <laughs> Iran. 
Okay. <laughs> it's probably like about an Iranian person converting into Judaism. The escape from Iran. <laughs> A, Iranian person running away from Iran and converting, yeah, look, to, Judo, Ju converting to Judaism. Jerusalem, France, Iran, Al Qaeda, the Mossad, and Jerusalem again. I thought people here would think that Judaism is a religion for a certain race of people, not yeah, for so but why they is this? Won't, they, they, they want you to read about an action figure, but they don't want you to think that he's not Jewish. They don't want you to convert, but they don't want the child reading about a non-Jewish person. Exactly. They want to control the information I read as a kid. Right. I won't identify with a irreligious person, Right. but they don't want secular people to convert. Wow. Yeah. That's the first, by the way, just, just so you understand, the book opens on this side, not as, as yeah. from right And this is a children's but book. This is a children's book, and the first page is, 9-11 very very starting <laughs> but, very slow and wow. very like okay but even this that is like a story that happens in the u.s it doesn't have any women have you noticed that like we just one woman here no it's not it's a it's a dude i think it? Okay. yeah it is i think <laughs> okay what's the look it's male right Mostly. so why can't they depict women in this even a, a, a cartoon of a woman is considered immodest okay so that so that's controlling the way that people dress and their hairstyle and this is extreme manipulation through yeah. information control i didn't know how the women representatives in the knesset in our parliament looked like until i left i didn't know how they looked like you didn't know how your governmental representatives even looked yeah, the females the female until ones. Like we wow. had one, we had the, the fr like one of the first uh, prime ministers, a, a woman in Israel. I don't know how she looked like. Oh my gosh. Okay, a question. Is this supposed to be the Iranian? I don't know. Okay. But again, like you don't have an uh, access to the internet or stuff like that. So a lot of times like you won't know about cultural differences between different groups. Okay. But this is not a representative of like what, what usually you? kids would read. This one is because it's like a children's book, but it's about Talmudic figures. Okay. So everything here is like Talmudic stories, but it's for kids. So Talmud. Yeah. There is something it's Talmudic. It's not a Talmud, but it's Talmudic stories. stories for, for like kids. biblical stories for kids in but it, well, yeah. it would be like Bible stories, but I mean this is just a, a more Jewish version of that. So Talmud has its own version stories separate from the Torah. Yeah, yeah. It's teaching you that women belong in the in the <laughs> kitchen. It seems the depiction of women, but if there has to be one, they're always from behind yeah. I mean, obviously in flowing clothing no, and no, no, no from no the front face. no face you can't see. oh really this is considered a, 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 like a very open-minded book because there is even a figure of a woman so wow. and you think the fact that you can't see her face is intentional for sure for sure yeah oh my god you don't have one but i'm not very religious about my atheism so i can say whatever i want <laughs> yeah I know, but I'm is kidding. it this bad is this like this is magic isn't it yeah. supposed to be taboo to have magic no no not if you believe it's like if you believe it's real then it's it's not okay okay as so long as it's like harry is potter okay. is, is is sinful but this is not harry okay. potter is sinful because it's t teaching you about real ma like magic yeah. like uh, actual magic but this is just tricks so it's okay yeah, yeah. all right so. Yeah, that's, that's actually how it was growing up for me, for too. For you, too? Yeah, because I couldn't read about anything that had to do with witchcraft, because it was encouraging witchcraft, and, yeah. you, you know, you must not suffer a witch to live, that kind of thing. But this, like, just tricks, it was just sleight of hand, so it's yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, we, we, we should, should go. Let's uh, go. Hello. Ah, okay. okay, tell us, what is this? Yeah. What is this? Oh, so it's, it's called a Okay. And it's, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. it's something that you wrap around your Right, arm. yes, I've seen, you've done it. I wouldn't be able to demonstrate because it's only for males. I don't even know how to tie it. You don't know how to tie it? No. We've done, we did this in New York. Yeah, I mean, I think we can cut to a clip of that here, probably. Mm, well, can you, can you put it on us? No. No? It's something that you put on, like, for yeah. prayer. It's very holy, so yeah. even if you put it on, you're not allowed to talk or do anything, like... Really? Because you need to pray to the gods. You need focus and to focus pray on yeah and this so goes on your head to remind you about God one on your head and one on your arm oh okay and what is inside a biblical uh, verses about the exodus and about uh, uh, like the time that you, we got the tablets uh. on Mount Sinai
And it's supposed to be like close. To, one is supposed to be close so to your heart, and one yeah. is supposed yeah, to be close so to your mind. Here yeah. it's like close to your heart. Heart, yeah. close to your heart, and the one that is close, so that here it's close to your. So mind. that means that your heart and mind is close to God. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what it means? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Enjoy this one. Do you want to mention your store in case people want to visit your store? Yeah. Store. This is Mishkanat Cheret. This is stuff to Jewish, to everybody who want to stuff to Jewish, you have here. Do you have an online store? Same What's your website? Mishkanat Kharet. Alright, Mishkanat Kharet, go find, if you're looking for, I, w I might buy one. Yeah, it. this is for, now there is a holiday of Purim coming up. So it's the the you scroll know. of Esther. It's you very holy, so you're not supposed to drop it or anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Drew, do you... Do you see any similarities between your upbringing and what Amir, what Amir is telling you about her oh, upbringing? Oh yeah, one thing is you talked about how you basically consumed propaganda in your yeah. childhood and there were things that were specifically targeted toward children yeah. for your entire childhood. You didn't see the outside world. Yeah. So I grew up in a place that was super media saturated, but I didn't see the outside world half as much as most people. You didn't necessarily grow up in a place that was media saturated, yeah. but you consume the propaganda constantly. Here, it's so insulated that you wouldn't necessarily, there's no billboards here. Yeah, that no. I mean, there's no Western people like up uh, on billboards. No, there's no makeup commercials or they anything. They have their own newspapers, their own wow. like way of communicating information. No exposure whatsoever to so this, yeah. it's, it's very interesting because you're ex-Christian, I'm ex-Muslim, and you're ex-religious Jewish. But I think you two have more similarities with each other because even though I'm ex-Muslim, I was raised in a liberal uh, family and you two were raised in very conservative families. So so I'm not going to be a good reference to see if, what's the similarity when it comes to comparing religions with each other. So as we go by, everything that Amir says, if you notice anything that is similar to your upbringing, point it out so that yeah. we could compare it with each other. Yeah, definitely. In the store, we were talking about how they were depicting women in like a very gender role, if at all. So it's very important to know that in this community, women aren't necessarily pushed towards the very uh, genderified roles because men don't work, don't only study work. religion. That's why I want wow. to yeah. Oh, yeah. So women are encouraged to study after high school and to pursue like a, a technical education that would provide them as a profession so to support they can, the men so they can study yeah. religion okay but women are still expected to fulfill the normal housewife roles while providing for their families what yeah so they have to do the typical women things but they also have to do what in the west we would consider you know housewife. a traditional yeah. male gender role which is the breadwinner yeah. and they have to be the, yeah. the you know the woman. Well, I want to move yeah. here actually now. I get to just study religion and I do nothing else, and <laughs> my wife will provide for me and also do the housework. Okay, how, how can I? Is there? Do they accept new members here? No. <laughs> what if the community found out that there were there was a couple here where the man uh, was doing all of the housework and it, and the the woman wasn't doing the housework and was was just bringing in the bread. Basically. Okay, so my dad used to take us to the park because. My dad didn't grow up in a in an Orthodox community. My dad grew up in a conservative community, which is a totally different sector of Judaism. Yeah. They're very liberal. And he used to take us to the park. Everyone in the city knew who my dad was because he took us to the park. That was unusual, taking yeah. you to the park? Yeah, he used to play with us as kids. And what? it was very unusual. How, Everyone knew who he was. What a monster. Play with your own children in a park. Well, how horrible. I don't think I've ever heard something that's more behavior control than <laughs> saying you, it's unusual or taboo to play with your own children in the park. park. People usually refer to like controlling and oppression and they refer to laws. So there are no official laws that say women are only allowed to do mm. that, women are not allowed to do that. But society is so good at punishing you mm. for straying from the norm that you yourself are terrified of doing that. Yeah. No one says to women like, oh, it's probably more appropriate for you not to drive. It's not like Saudi Arabia. But there's but no rule that- my mom drove, so I wasn't accepted for in, into schools in this city. No one said to me, oh, you weren't accepted to the school because your mom drives. But I knew, and everyone else knew, that that's why I wasn't accepted. I mean, I'm in complete culture shock right now. I mean, I study this stuff, and this is 
This is so extreme. The, the crazy thing here is that it's actually similar to uh, what Jehovah's Witnesses say. They, oh, no, 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 we're, we're not a cult because we don't have specific uh, leadership that, that does this and this. Or M Mormons will say, oh, no, we're not a cult because of this and this. Or, uh, you know, the Baptists will say, we don't have a big clergy, so it's not official rules. There, it can't right. be a cult. It's impossible to be a cult. It's we unwritten. don't worship a human. It's, it's unwritten, it's unwritten rules. rules, so it makes it not count. And that's exactly what they're yeah. saying here, but it's even worse. Yeah, because I know that everyone I love would pay the cons the, would pay the price if I stray just a bit. There are no rules that say I, I can't do this or I can't do that or that I can't walk around the city with pants. Well, are you okay? I that seems like a lot of pressure. <laughs> I don't know how you're so happy and like a very strong person because that seems like a lot of anxiety and emotional stress to know that the, what you're deciding to be an independent and be individual, like it's not just the consequences to you, your your family is being taken hostage because you're also the I, consequences to them. I, I used to toss and turn a lot over that at night, but nowadays I understand that it's it's not me, it's the community. I yeah. used to think it's me, like oh, I am so putting my siblings into this pain right. by being who I am, but now I understand that it's not the case. So you've job. broken free from your chains, but now the suffering that you have is seeing everyone else's. Yeah, my sister now is in the age where she should get married. And she knows she's paying the price for me being a trans, a, a secular atheist. Oh, we just used the A word. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so, yeah, no. I know she's paying the price. She cries about it. But do they blame you? No, my oh. siblings are very sweet. Do you feel guilty? Yeah, of course. You shouldn't. I know I shouldn't, but she's my sister and I love her. This is something I relate to as well. One of the main reasons I didn't come out for, for so long, even when I had my channel, and was about to go full-time, like full-time job, the reason I didn't come out was because I didn't want to hurt my parents. It wasn't because I was ashamed of myself or thought I was bad or, or guilty about that. I didn't want to make their life just full of pain for something right. I can't I can't stop. Just to be a go on record, I didn't use the A word first. I'm here to, so, all right. Guilty, <laughs> guilty as charged. So, I was talking about how there's no billboards from outside, there's no information being spread around here except for maybe store names but you said that information is spread on these white papers on the wall. What yeah. is this? It's called Pashkaville. It means basically notes. Most of the time, it's just like someone's opinion about they're trying to draft like uh, religious people into the military and they oppose to that. So like they're trying to make a secular, like, uh, gosh, we need to fight for ourselves. It's usually call outs like, let's go to have a protest or okay. uh, let's burn this newspaper. Uh, women aren't modest enough anymore. Those kind of stuff would be written on the white. And so why do they have to communicate it here rather than like on social media or Because like there's no social media. There's no internet. There's no television. And you don't even use <sighs> smartphones. You have kosher phones and it's phones that are, they have a special number. So if you're a member of the community and you have a non-kosher phone, people would know because you have a different number and it costs more money to dial to you. And so that's a tool for the, the social control. Yeah, so if I go into a, let's say I'm a candidate for a high school and I'm now, I'm a 13 year old and I need to go into high school and they ask me what's your parents' phone number and want it in order to uh, keep kids who their parents don't follow the rule of having a kosher phone. They want to keep them out of the school. So it's a tool of knowing who is a good person, who is a bad person, yeah. who, your, who your kids should go to sleepovers with and who they shouldn't. Exactly. Because of those stuff. Like it says there, all the rabbis said that we should go for, for a protest about this and that. Let's block the main road down there. Can we maybe go and put atheists? stuff over there? People like try actually. People try. Atheist groups in Israel try to like bring new messages into the religious communities oh. by using this. Which and atheist group? We need to support of, them. Actually a lot of feminist ultra orthodox women feminist movements use that a lot of times like don't vote for them like in order to let people know that they exist. And what yeah. happened? So they wrote like don't vote for the women's group so people would know that there is a women's group. Whoa, that so that's brilliant. Cool. Oh. Yeah, so, it's so they're acting like they're one of the religious people, yeah. but they're sneaky. They're, well, they're they are religious, but they're women who feel like just because they're religious okay. doesn't mean that they don't okay, have the right they, to be voted. Right, yeah. right, right. But they are trying to send them, they're trying to pretend to be one, on of, the one of the extremists, but they are putting messages in, hidden in there to, to, 
Fidget can move men like what? Wait, there's a woman in the group. I always said. How that, can we support them? I always said that the Saudi Arabian and Iranian feminists that were taking off their hijabs and and okay. waving them, they're the most badass. But this is a candidate for some of the most badass <laughs> feminists in the world. Let's go right there. I, I wish I had a. Is there is there something yeah, but, we can write? But people don't have internet connection. I know some news were banned because they had too many women writers. Too many women writers? Yeah, or let's say they published like advertisements to go to college and pursue higher education. Oh. So they were, and, and we're talking about orthodox programs. So w women and men study separately, but it's still not okay still because too it's liberal. high education. Women, women have to do all the work, but they still don't have the right to exist. Yeah. But women can study other things other than religion? Women are only allowed to go to, into like a, to get a profession. Right. So they're not allowed to pursue a career, but they are allowed to, let's say, be a, a software engineer because they would get a high salary and they would be able to support their family. So there's graffiti over here on what you said was tourist information. Yeah, let's, let's see let's, what let's it's check about. That out. This has been vandalized. So why would this be vandalized? I don't know, but I assume that it, there's no controversial materials on this. So I just assume that it's because having touristic information brings in secular people into the city, which is something that people don't want because their kids would see secular people. Even seeing someone like me is, is dangerous. Yeah. But especially like seeing someone like me because I'm female and I'm wearing pants and it's wait. It's a disgrace. You're, not it, you're just a disgrace. I present to speak. And they, they find it offensive. Yeah. Okay. I'm supposed to be wearing skirts. And not having a voice and not being filmed because that's completely immodest. I noticed a lot of people with religious clothing are looking at us. Yeah. Are they, do they feel like we're not welcome here? And they just feel like it's weird that we're here. It's just curiosity. They're not used to seeing different things. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if kids in kids' books you can't even put a, a person in yeah. Western clothes, yeah. then what, it would be really strange to see one in person. Yeah. The look at this like we enter the Amish country. The Amish country. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And you you notice that people they have religious clothes, so they're limited in their yeah. ability to express themselves. And that's a way of controlling. They taught me that in school. Of course. Because if you're dressed that way, you won't be able to go to a secular place because right away like the person would say like it's it's not kosher or yeah. it's not suitable for Orthodox people, like what are you doing here? Like yeah. it's a barrier between people here and the secular Israeli community. Can you read some of oh. those? Can you tell us what this is about? Okay. If you can tell us what is any of this saying. Okay, so it says here, uh, uh, Jewish blood has been spilled. Why is the reason that God did this uh, calamity to us? Well, that escalated quickly. And it's talking about uh, two uh, car accidents, two buses ac uh, accidents. Mostly women were harmed. The guys weren't harmed. Oh, thank God. So, the only conclusion that we have of this, I'm a transla translator by profession, so I'm accurately translating this. Oh, the you are. only conclusion is that women's perversion is the reason for this calamity. Oh. Wait, what? And what? all the calamities in general. It's How? just like when a hurricane strikes Miami and everyone blames gay people because. Exactly. So oh, here, wait. the scapegoat, because gay people obviously don't exist, yeah. do they? They don't, right? I right. mean, what, what is... Not here. What did you say? <laughs> what was the word? Yeah. What? So women are blamed, and their perversion, this word means perversion, perversion, by not dressing exactly in the modest way that men imagined for them, that caused this calamity of people dying. Even a story that has to do with women being a victim of something, they still use that as an ag attack on women. Even yeah. even when you get hit by a bus, that's still narrative to attack women. Oh, and wait, this is a synagogue notice. They're saying that the morning prayers are transferred into the women's section. Basically, like the women's place of prayer is so seldomly used because women aren't encouraged to pray because women don't really have that active part of being part of religion, even their area in the synagogue is used for men stuff. Okay, because just, they're oh. so unwelcome there. Is there anything here that is not anti-woman? <laughs> so we so, just passed right here, and yeah. you pointed this out. It, I this didn't look like anything to me. This is a kosher certificate, and it says here very clearly for women's clothes. So the clothes have to be certified kosher. 
Yeah. Even. All clothes. No, men don't have that. No, so women can wear color unlike men, but they yeah. have to be certified kosher. But, uh, that's another example for how society works in its own way. You can ignore this kosher certificate and go into some stores that don't have the certificate. But if your school finds out, you can be kicked out. You can be punished for just wearing clothes bought from the wrong store. Not just by yeah. entering the wrong store. You don't even need to buy it. You don't even yeah. need to buy it. Just You can get kicked out of school for just entering a store? Yeah. And another thing you should notice, we didn't pass any entertainment. There's no entertainment whatsoever. You only see down here clothing stores, religious stores, or food stores. Take a look at that, and if you notice anything that has to do with entertainment, let me know. So there's an organized authority out there certifying some clothes as kosher? Yeah. Just to answer your question, we have in design everywhere, and it's very strong in the religious community, that no one is supposed to say bad words on his friend. Yeah, it's you have to, to keep a clear mind and clear speech about each other, but what it means? You are not to curse. You are not allowed to say something like that will affect his workplace or his profession. You have to be very nice to each other, and this is promoted very strong uh, in real life. The religious community always is occupied about spying on your neighbor to check if he's really religious, what is he wearing, to what store did he enter. What, what did he wear? Did he speak with someone? Did he turn off the lights of the Sabbath at the right time? They spy on each other all the time. The sign is all about being nice to your neighbor and allowing him to do what he needs to do without you saying no, mean things about, about him. No, it's about the biblical command of not uh, talking evilly about your fellow. So don't speak evil about your fellow man. However, you are expected to enforce social punishment yeah. on people if they break yeah. laws. Yeah. For instance, the store certificate for kosher, it only works on the fact that people would tell on you to the school if you go into the wrong store. And what greater evil in society is there than that? Yeah. So, it's a coffee shop, and there are no sitting places. If you can uh, notice that. You can't sit inside? There are no sitting places. The rabbi of this city doesn't approve of people sitting in public and eating. That's considered religiously inappropriate. You would notice while we go on that there are a lot of places where you can purchase food, but no sitting areas. So keep an eye for that. Wait, what's the argument for that? Is that in the Talmud? What's the argument Actually, for... the Talmud states that a person who eats on the street is like a, a street dog. You shouldn't accept his testimony in a religious forum. One of the main uh, reasons nowadays for not having sitting areas in, and eating in public is because young people can meet each other and uh, people should only meet in the appropriate arranged marriage of course. idea. So I was eating a sandwich earlier out in public. You won't was see that, too many people eating in public. Was that, did no. I use something taboo? No, because you're not religious, so no one cares. <laughs> of course, no one cares about that. At this point, Armin and I decided to try and flag down someone on the street to talk to. Locals didn't seem to be comfortable with speaking to us, but we did come across some Orthodox Jewish visitors with great admiration for B'nai Brock who would speak with us. It was interesting. Uh, there's certain identities here that are more traditional. What if you're raised in a way that's very traditional, but you feel that you don't belong here, like you don't have the same ideas? You can go or... to somewhere else in Israel to live. But I what if you, you, what if you want to live here as, as yourself, but you're not what traditional? Was, what would stop you? What would stop you? If your son one day decides to leave the culture and not be Jewish anymore, would you still love him the same way and accept him? What if he ends up being gay, but with a Jewish boy? These okay. hypotheticals are getting more hypotheticals and more uh, extreme, and I assure I you none never, of this is on the cards. <laughs> um, Tune into part two of this video to see this conversation and our eventual surprising interactions with locals. Subscribe, check out my Patreon, follow me on Twitter and Facebook at GM Skeptic, and until next time, stay skeptical.